Right, well, yeah, I'm talking about 3D printing and in a sense, I'm actually glad that I've come at the end because I've just made some notes on what people have been talking about today. And I think it's important to show how these link in to, the, to what I'm talking about, which is the next revolution of the web. We've heard about how people like to do things. They like to, they like to make playlists. They like to attach memories to objects. We've seen the limitations of the internet, but we've also seen that, that it's important to sort of archive the internet because it's so fast changing. And in actual fact, we don't even notice it is changing. So I think if there's something I've taken away from those and which links into my talk is the fact that people at the moment have that ability to share data. In fact, on the talk um, that we had in the break, they were talking about sharing data and that moving over time. And in a sense, that's what 3D printing's about. Money on, me stand on those glasses. So if I go anywhere near, shout at me. So, aha. <coughs> I think the key for me is that 3D printing is happening now. In fact, it started back in the 1970s. But 3D printing has been restricted to a, to a certain number of people because of, of the cost of it. The trouble is with us humans is that often things are changing at a rapid pace and we don't even know that they're changing. If I look back to when I first started my career, I know I look young, but I actually started my career before email. Yeah, I know, you're shocked, aren't you? Yeah, well, I did. And I, I've lived through all that time. When I look back, I realize there's been a revolution. I look back and see that there's been that communication revolution happening. But actually, day to day, I don't think I noticed it was happening. And that's often the case. If you, you know, sat down with Gutenberg when he, when he did the printing press, the people around him were probably saying, well, it's a fad. Nobody will ever want paper. The, the people who made quill pens were saying, don't be stupid. People don't want ink. It's not sustainable. It's silly. Right? Looking back, look how printing has changed our lives with communication again. Industrial revolution. You know, people were frightened of getting on the trains because they thought they would get killed from whiplash because they went over 30 miles an hour or something. There were the naysayers then. And some t that's what's happening now is that in a sense, we're in this social revolution, but I would argue, and hopefully at the end of this, you'll see that we are very much at the tip of it, where we actually think we've changed a lot. I personally think we've hardly changed anything up to now. Yes, we can all agree, business, <laughs> I laugh when I say business is becoming more social, because we like to think business is becoming more social. We like to think that they're really grasping at this idea of showing their, their brand personality, of connecting and sharing and collaborating. And possibly they do do that for the first two months of encompassing social media, and after that they just revert back probably to the telling. Um, but let's be positive about it, social media is open up that communication and why because for us as individuals <coughs> much prefer the recommendation from friends we no longer believe that Colgate toothpaste will make our teeth whiter than white we, we know that if we use that hair shampoo that we won't look like I can never say her name Ava Longoria or whatever I use that shampoo do I look anything like her no Right, so we don't believe advertising anymore. We trust recommendations from the people that we trust. But, and it's a big but. Actually, thinking of a big but, revolutions, it's a bit like, I was thinking when I was sat in my chair, it's a bit like putting on weight. You, you find on the Monday or Tuesday that you've put a couple of pounds on over the weekend because you've had a few too many bevies. 
by the end of the week you've probably put on four pounds miraculously within ten to, um, sort of like 10 days three stone have gone on and you never notice that weight creeping on and that is what business isn't recognizing at the moment they're seeing social media as the end rather than the beginning Social media for me has been the gateway, the gateway that has sort of opened up business and consumer. Okay, but the, they are still on the different sides of the wall. Business needs consumer, consumer needs business. And yes, social media has allowed us to talk to each other, radical idea in itself, I believe. But that's but we still are the um, the the different sides of the walls. What I think 3D printing is going to do is actually break down that wall altogether. It's actually moving the consumer, uh, the consumer or the customer, from outside the wall to inside the company. The consumer, the customer is going to be at the core of what business is. And I think that's going to be really transformative. Now, for anybody who hasn't seen what 3D printing does, in fact, I think, that, again, another reason why they put me at the end of this is once you start seeing what 3D printing does now, you get sort of punch drunk. So on a Friday night, it's quite good because you don't have to buy that extra round of drinks. By the time you get there, your head will be all over the place. This shows some of the things that we're doing right now. It's not futuristic, we're doing it right now. And I'm not sure that we understand as a business. We think, we think ordering, ordering um, well, I don't know, a card off Moonpig is like really futuristic. They're printing out our card, right? What about, what about that um, instead of uploading your photo to Moonpig, and then printing out the card with the joke on it, what about them actually sending a sculpture or a sculpture of your favorite flowers to that person? This is all that can be done now. In the middle is a picture of a printing machine. That one, I think it's that one, was uh, uh, shown at the uh, Computer Electronics Show in Vegas this year, 1,100 quid. 1100 quid now at the beginning of it i said 3d printing had been around since the 1970s it had it has but the machines have been over a hundred thousand pounds now we're down to almost being able to have a desktop printer that prints objects now let me give you some ideas it blows your mind or it blows my mind somebody's just had a printed jawbone put in i think it was I somebody tell but i think it was in holland it was in Europe somewhere. They printed out the exact, they scanned her face and printed out an exact jawbone, right? At the top, people are printing out human tissues. There's a guy in California who is, um, in fact, he's on a TED talk, if you, if you Google it, um, that actually is very near to being able to print out the first human kidney. The first human kidney, right? <laughs> Let me see, I can see some faces going already. That, this one over here, this, does, this completely does my mind, right? This is a structure 10 meters tall. There are people in California building houses, but not building them, printing them out. I told you I'd save you a round of drinks when you got to the pub. It plays with your mind, this stuff, doesn't it? <laughs> this one up here, you can see by my spelt figure that I love chocolate. That prints out chocolate cakes, the one in the middle. The one above it is the University of Southampton who've printed out the first plane. And in actual fact, the really cool thing about 3D printers is that they can print out a 3D printer. <laughs> so there's actually an open source um, thing on the web where you can actually get the, the, the design and everything and print out your own 3D printer. Up in the top right hand corner is something that I've actually just sent my nephew. My nephew, he's not into like a gift certificate or a, or a card or anything like that. That's his favourite music track. He's just had, a, he's just had a, his first baby and he, he's named a Layla after his fa favourite track. It's links to your playlists. He's I downloaded off SoundCloud Layla and got it printed out onto an iPhone cover for him. 
So his iPhone cover is now Layla, the sound waves of Layla. Right, all that is happening now. Xbox Live, have we got any gamers in here? <laughs> yeah? Some people not wanting to admit it and going, <laughs> right? Print out your avatar. So if you really like your avatar, you've got, you, you feel it's that other half of you that lives the life that you want to live, print them out. Okay? This is fantastic, right? I'm really passionate about this stuff because business, get a grip now, this is happening now. This is wonderful, right? No tooling costs for anything. Just print it out. And if people want to know, if there's probably some people in the room that keep saying, when you say print it out, Anna, what do you mean? What it, the other word for 3D printing is additive manufacturing. Because what, it, what you normally do when you manufacture is something is get a solid block of something and chip away to make a shape. 3D printing basically layer and layer and layer from a, um, a computer-aided design, a CAD model, um, layers the, the material, be it plastic, titanium, human tissue or whatever, and builds it up into an exact structure. No tooling. Think of all the times when you've had to persuade businesses, oh no, but it's going to cost £20,000. What's your return on investment for that? How many are you going to sell? No tooling. You c there's no real difference from printing out one shoe with green on it and the next shoe that has a slightly different green on it. So now you have mass personalization possible. It's not on one generic card. You can make a million things that are just slightly different. You can bring manufacturing in-house, possibility. I find this bit of it quite interesting because we keep talking about outsourcing and certain parts of the world have built a lot of trade based on that. Well, actually, manufacturing could be brought back in-house. No travel, no air things, no threats of Somali pirates as your... As your um, TVs go around Africa to you, right? Sustainability is much better. Less travel costs, lower wastage. I said it builds up in an exact model. You're not chipping away at anything. So less material, again, sustainability. All these add up to reduce cost base. The business model, which is great, because as there's choice in the world and the internet opens up, and you know, this idea of the global village, Choice means that we have to get more efficient. We have to get better at what we use. So it's going to be a uh, reduced cost base. I can't get more excited than this, right? <laughs> but with every piece of good news, there's always a little bit that we need to consider. What's going to be business's role in the future? If I can design my own shoe and I can print out my own shoe, why would I need a shoe manufacturer and a shoe shop to go and buy it? Now, people will say, yeah, no, but it's a lot of bother. They were probably the people who said, why would anybody want a washing machine in their house? There's a laundrette. Why would anybody need a computer on their desk? How weird's that, hey? Why would anybody want a portable television in their bedroom? All the people have said this in the past, but think about it, it's the convenience. You can just print out all your, all your Christmas presents on Christmas Eve. I don't have to go shopping at four o'clock on Christmas Eve ever again. Okay, we need to think about that relationship between the business and the consumer because they can create, have the ability to create what they want now. The only thing that's restricting them at the moment is the machines can only print one material, okay? There are, once that's solved, then the consumers be able to do anything. So we need to move to a completely different business model. Think about it. We need a social business model. We don't just need to be able to talk to somebody and comment on a blog. We need a social business model, something that's going to transform the way that we all do business. Think of the intellectual property issues. What's to stop me from getting this microphone, right, scanning it, and printing out five others and t or ten others? Nothing. 
what's to stop me from um, scanning this in and then printing out on my daughter's 18th birthday um, these necklaces as a, as a sort of like a gift of something I always wore. I've only paid for it once. There's nothing stopping it. Of course there are laws that say that I can't sell commercially. But how's that going to be policed? It's something we need to think about. What is the role of business? At the moment, there are businesses that are thinking ahead and actually using themselves as a marketplace. So you design, can you remember the phone cover for, my, for Adam, my nephew? That's a company called Shapeways, I think I got that from, where you can upload your designs and they'll print it out and send it for you. A bit like an Amazon kind of thing. So there are people now giving consumers the functionality. There's got to be some kind of reduced volume of sales. I'm only selling one microphone. Ethical issues. It sort of struck me that I lost my father, who was a really big influence. My mum struggled with losing him for quite a while. Um, and all I could imagine was, can you imagine now, almost going back to the beginning of the 20th century when, I don't know whether you can remember, but the last thing people did with people who had died is the sort of, <laughs> sorry, I'm just laughing, it's not funny at all, but they sort of stood the body up at the back of the family and took the last picture. <laughs> family, yeah, they did, right? <laughs> well, what's to stop my mum? I know it sounds really stupid, but what's the, to stop somebody like my mum, who's, who was really grief-stricken from printing out my dad? <laughs> Now that seems weird, but c you can imagine something like that happening. Ethical issues of me printing out a kidney just slightly incorrectly. Ethical issues of if we can replace everybody's kidneys when they go think, replace everybody's heart, right? People aren't going to die as young. What's the effect on society? Sustainability. I said lower wastage is for business, yeah, but actually we've got wastage in homes. So. <laughs> <clears throat> two heads are going to become one in the sense that the consumer and the business is going to merge and business needs to think about what role they're playing in that relationship doesn't mean to say you don't have a relationship <coughs> it might be about collaborating rather than selling you ha you design we produce it might be about licensing your designs look at um, what Steve Jobs did Steve Jobs said Napster they're at the edge. People are wanting to make their own romantic tapes. Their own romantic playlists, sorry. Shows my age, doesn't it? Romantic playlists. Let's find a way of doing it. iTunes was born with digital rights management. It might be about the fact that you're licensing your designs and good consumers will actually buy the license. It might be that it's a two-way marketplace rather than a marketplace. I.e. here, it might be the fact that you can buy from us from what you've made, you've made, and you've made to see whether there's a thing. If you can't find what you like, send us your design and we'll make it for you and put it in our marketplace. It might be that you have great expertise in that area. So it's not that people are paying a premium for the manufacturing of it, you're paying the premium for the expertise. Okay? And I suppose what it's about thinking about a future style of business rather than the present model, because the present model in 10 years' time, 5, 10 years' time, and I say 5, 10, but it always amazes me how quickly these things come around, a bit like the weight, that, that it will be here before we know it. So... If this talk has told you anything, it's one, you should keep an eye on your weight. Secondly, secondly, that 3D printing is something that you should be considering as a business. And thirdly, do you really see social as something broader than communication? If anybody has any interest in this area or whatever, it's, I'm doing a PhD on it, so, so contact me. But for now, have a wonderful Friday and a wonderful weekend.